Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? This is Tweak back again with another video. Today, we are going to be going over the Russian podcast, which was just a couple of days ago. So we have all of the notes here. Thank you, show who went through it all and got the notes for me so that we could put this little video together for you guys. So uh, during this podcast, a lot of very interesting stuff was brought up and a lot of stuff that is very important for you guys who are watching to listen to and take note of. OK, you will see what I'm talking about once we get into it. But let's crack into it. 12.8 next patch podcast in English is going to be next week. So make sure you don't miss that. They're going to be showing some upcoming features and they're going to show some leaks. So new things that we're going to be getting. If you guys want to see that? Make sure you watch the podcast next week. It'll be on the official Battlestate Games uh, Twitch channel. I'm assuming. I, I'm assuming it is. Um, 12.8 won't be overwhelming, but it's a nice patch with some small features and new things. We don't have any wipe dates yet, but it will either be 12.9 or 0.13, probably. So that is likely when we're going to get a wipe. I predict that it might be November or December. At this point, it may still be November, December, but I don't know. That's just my guess for people that are wondering. Uh, the compass and heavy bleeding. Nikita is excited about this. Current bleeding will remain and heavy bleeding will be added. Also, I hadn't seen this before, psychological effects like shock from pain will be added. He wants it to be a surprise, so we're not getting any details on it. So, psychological effects. I have no idea what that might be, but I'm curious. I'm, I'm down to see what this is. Right. Network changes. Currently working on reducing load times in and out of RAID. Lots of work going on on networking. So I've noticed a lot of people after one of the recent patches said that those times actually got increased, and a lot of people said that they were actually decreased. So... On this one, I'm assuming they're just trying to optimize it for everybody's systems. Some people get better load times, some people don't. I'm sure the next time they patch it, it'll be better for everybody involved, I'm sure. Uh, point 13 was planned for this year, but may not be possible now due to the pandemic, which everybody should understand. And if you don't, you're probably an asshole. Uh, everybody's working from home, so it's a bit scuffed. They're doing their best. Currently, there's 115 staff at BSG with 30 people that are outsourced. So they're not all in the office together, meaning that the work is slowing down. It's not as easy to get in contact with everybody else since they're all working from home. So lads, much like every other business, during a pandemic, things are slowing down a little bit and they're all doing their best under these circumstances. Okay, now regarding everybody's favorite, the grenade launcher. So currently in Tarkov right now, there is only a finite amount of grenade launchers. They will run out eventually. So if you're somebody who really likes grenade launchers, you should probably buy them now because once they're gone, they will be gone. Uh, they are also going to be making changes to grenade launcher ammo and maybe the grenade launchers themselves come the 12.8 patch. So, interesting stuff. Point 13 will include streets and custom rigs. For example, on the custom rigs, one of the new slots for the custom rigs is going to be a med pouch, which is going to be a 1-2 to two slot in your inventory or in your rig that will open to a 6x6, six six, like on the rig. So that's where you'll put all your meds, which is really cool because that will save you a massive amount of space. And you could have multiples of those in your custom rigs, I'm assuming. Um, so that would be really good for like if you're going on a massive med run, you'll have tons of extra space to bring meds with you. Uh, the Unity tester server is still planned, just missing features at the moment. The woods expansion is confirmed. It's going to be 1.5 to 2 times bigger uh, than the current woods. So it's going to be a rework slash expansion from the mountain behind Spine and the plane. So it's going to be coming out the south side of the map. Uh, so really excited to see that. I, I'd love to know what they're going to put there. Uh, I have no idea myself. We've done some theory crafting on stream. But other than that, I've got no idea. I'm excited to see what they do. Uh, we've also got a factory rework slash expansion planned for a later time. So it looks like the next map that's going to be getting reworked slash getting a expansion is going to be factory. Nikita confirmed that offline PvE is planned to play offline with friends. The PvE game mode completely separate to the online game. It may be possible if people are interested to level and play games as normal uh, and just PvE on a separate server. So we'll just have to see when the time comes. There'll be feedback, there'll be testing and stuff. We'll all get to check it out and give it a try and give feedback on it. And then they can decide what they want to do from there. But that's cool. A lot of people have been asking for that. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to be excited to check that out. Cool. Uh, so Steam Audio has currently reached a wall. They could push an improvement, but it will affect the CPUs of everybody and they will lose FPS. So right now that they don't, they don't want to do it. So Steam Audio currently being held off on being worked on until they can figure out how to do it without everybody losing FPS and it affecting everybody's CPUs, I guess. Uh, he's also said that the report system is working well. Please use it. Also, 
big PSA. This is something I preach on my stream all the time as well. And Nikita has just said it during this podcast as well. Everybody use two-factor authentication. Accounts are being stolen like crazy. Like phishing accounts and just accounts being hacked is happening all the time. If you guys want to make sure that your account doesn't get hacked, please, for the love of God, make sure you have two-factor authentication, okay? You're just making it harder for cheaters and fishers to get your account. Please put on two-factor authentication. They've also said in the future that they may use their own two-factor authenticator, which is linked to a phone number. Now, a lot of people might have a problem with this. However, this is probably the most effective way to make sure that your Escape from Tarkov account stays yours by tying it to a mobile phone number, which is obviously unique and yours, and only you can get it. So... Enable 2FA for the moment, and whenever they add two-factor authentication linked to a phone number, add that. That would be my advice. It is very hard to recover stolen accounts, especially if they were stole, if they were cheated on. So accounts that get stolen, most of the time, they get cheated on, and then they're gone, and then they're banned, and that's the end of it. So make sure you use 2FA. Uh, they know of one guy who owned 80 to 90 accounts. He kept getting banned. Nikita calls them rage hackers, so this is probably a pretty common thing. Also, uh, this is uh, something I had no idea about. Sometimes Battleye will find a new exploit, push an update immediately, and that is the reason for all of these small patches recently. So I was wondering why we're getting so many patches, like every day, every day or two. Um, it's because it's Battleye finding a new cheat or a new exploit, so that's what those were. Uh, they are aware and fixing the issues with the arm hitbox and the gun building bugs right now, so that's getting worked on. Nikita also pleads with the community to give feedback, suggestions, and report bugs using the bug report system and construct, and most importantly, do this constructively and have discussions. Years ago, <clears throat> when I first started playing this game, everything was open for discussion. Everything was always <clears throat> a pretty chill conversation when it came to new mechanics in EFT or updates for EFT. These days, sometimes people suggest ideas, maybe streamers suggest ideas, and then they get death threats. And they get told to, you know, F themselves and all this other negative, unconstructive BS. Uh, that's not what we need. If you guys are going to talk about stuff wherever, always make sure it's constructive. Being an asshole doesn't help anybody. Doesn't help the devs. Doesn't help the community. In fact, it just makes the community look like a bunch of idiots. And as far as I'm concerned, we have an awesome community here in the Tarkov, uh, in the Tarkov directory. And it should stay that way. Um, so yeah. Don't be an asshole. You know, listen to people's ideas. Give constructive feedback, okay? Uh, Nikita's always open to hearing suggestions, and I'm assuming that is based on people not reading and people not being assholes. So take that with a grain of salt. You put an idea out there, but you're an asshole while you're conveying the idea, he will probably uh, not read it. And that'll be that. He also mentions that he's been seeing a lot of discussions around the flea market and secure containers. He loves the discussion and hearing ideas and says it's the best way for them to fix issues is by you guys expressing them. Now, expressing them constructively. You don't do this, nothing's going to happen and you're just going to look like an asshole and everybody else is going to think you're an asshole too. Okay, so there you go. Please use the bug report feature. The more problems that are reported, the faster that they can fix them. This does not include fix this thing, re- don't be negative, okay? If you're going to do a bug report, don't be a knob, okay? Explain what it is, explain what the problem is, submit it. You don't need to call the devs, whatever. You don't need to be an asshole. Just report the problems, okay? Clearly, concisively, constructively, maybe even put in, I think if you did this, it might make it better, okay? And that's all you gotta do. Just don't be negative. Easy, right? Work on Raid Episode 5 is also ongoing. So that's good. I want to see the next episode of Raid. The last, uh, honestly, it's been an awesome series to watch so far. Uh, the lighting is an ongoing and complex issue, mostly uh, with the engine. So the engine is the main problem here. They need skilled people in this field, like graphical programmers, to fix this and get the lighting optimized. So they're still working on that. Uh, they also say here that they haven't done any testing with RTX yet. So I guess that'll be up to us to test whenever Tarkov gets RTX enabled. Maybe they'll just turn it on one day and be like, hey guys, go nuts, go have fun. Well, just see what happens, I guess. Um, which I'm excited about, honestly. I don't know what RTX is going to do to Tarkov, but we won't know until we try. It could be an absolute mess. It could be kind of cool. I don't know. But um, yeah, who knows? Ray tracing in Tarkov sometime within the next year, maybe. I, I don't know. But I, I'm down to give it a try. I'm down for them to just enable it. Let us play with it. And if it's absolutely screwed, it's absolutely screwed. It is what it is. 
Uh, Nikita has all, he's also said that uh, Tarkov will always change. Don't get used to anything. Everything is an experiment. Every wipe there will be more interesting, uh, will be more interesting than the last. Dynamic events will continue, such as like the Bitcoin link to the IRL price, which everybody thought I was lying about. The Bitcoin price has always been linked to the IRL price, except that one time where it stayed the same price for like six months. It's just because that system was bugged and then they fixed it. So that is a thing. <clears throat> So the economy should benefit from people who know things and are knowledgeable of what's going on and people who notice and act first will benefit. So that's a good way to make money. There you go. Uh, Nikita also said that he loves watching tournaments and seeing fan art and being uh, creative. Please be constructive and give feedback without negativity. Also, one thing I'd like to mention, Nikita has also stated that to the people that are constantly raging about dying and the servers are all too populated and all that kind of stuff, lads, uh, nighttime raids. Uh, a lot of people seem to have forgotten that these exist. Currently, the most underplayed map in Escape from Tarkov is actually Nighttime Factory. So, I always tell people this. If you're having trouble doing a task, go to a nighttime raid. Nighttime raids are usually dead, like most of the time. 90% of the raids played in Escape from Tarkov are daytime raids. That means that only 10% of the people who play this game and do raids in this game are at nighttime. So you are taking 90% less of a risk going into a nighttime raid to do your quests. So take that on board. Try out a nighttime raid. Bring a flashlight. Bring a cheap set of NVGs. Have fun. Play at nighttime. It's a good time. I should do more nighttime raids, honestly. I love nighttime raids in Tarkov. They're a lot of fun. Way more atmospheric, way more stressful, and they're just really cool. So everybody who has problems doing their quests, nighttime raids. I always preach this, but it took Nikita saying it on the podcast to make me repeat it in a YouTube video. So yeah. That is it. That is the Russian podcast kind of condensed for you guys into a small little video here. So lads, remember the English podcast is next week. We'll be seeing leaks and all that other kind of stuff on that podcast. Make sure to check it out. Follow the Escape from Tarkov or Battlestate Games uh, Twitch channel and make sure that you don't miss it. Also follow their Twitter and stuff. If you don't follow their Twitter, they post updates all the time on there. You should always, you should follow their Twitter. And while you're making a Twitter account, if you're new to Twitter, you can also follow my Twitter and my Instagram and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, follow my Twitch channel and uh, Twitch Prime. Yeah, there you go. Easy clap. Like the video if you liked it, lads. Leave a comment down below letting me know what video you want to see next. Let me know what you're excited to see in Escape from Tarkov coming up soon. And yeah, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out, my dudes.